Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Today I'll be playing around with an old Swan wireless security camera system I have lying around. We have a corner in our garden where we have bird feeders and a bird bath. And I love watching the birds, but I always seem to get there at the wrong time. So I want to put up the camera so I can watch them without the hassle of any cables. But this is just a fun project, so quality doesn't actually matter to me right now. So with that said, let's get on with it. This is what the kit originally looked like. Two cameras and a four channel receiver. Although that receiver can only view one channel at a time. Over time, its antenna will wear out and you can't pick up good signal anymore. So I've had to fix that, as you can see here, but that wasn't good enough. Here's the camera that I'm gonna be using and as you can see, I've extended its range attempted to extend its range with a radio antenna but as you will see later on that was also not enough. These cameras didn't come with a very good mounting system. This one doesn't even have one anymore as you can see because it only allowed the camera to go up and down. You couldn't adjust it to go left or right. In order to do that you had to get a piece of wood, cut it into a triangle so that it could sit sideways. Otherwise it will only sit perpendicular to the wall and go up or down. But um, since those mounts are so terrible, I removed them a long time ago. So I need to find a new way to mount these, well just this one, onto a piece of wood so it can watch the bird feeders and whatnot. Aside from the mounting issues, there was also a range problem. The antennas were only about this tall with a plastic sheathing around it. This little bit you see right here is all antenna there was. It's just a little piece of wire. It used to work nicely until metal fatigue kicked in and destroyed the connection between the receiver and the receiver's antenna. Here's the mounting system I'm using. I'm using a cheap Chinese GoPro knockoff action cam mount, which I've just cable tied or zip tied the camera to and that will screw onto a tripod mount or security camera uh, mount which I have one of those lying around which I'm going to use I think there might be a mount up here yes there is There is a signal, not that, gr not great of a one, but there's a signal in here. Right, so so far, I tried using simple radio antenna to try and extend the range of the camera, only to find that it wasn't that great. Simply because the amount of energy that the camera outputs, that tiny little antenna, now has to be extended out to an antenna about this long, and it's not well optimized for that. So I need to build an antenna that is more directional to allow the radio waves to be directed more towards the receiver's antenna instead of the radio waves just exiting in all directions harnessing it into a cone so that it bounces off and more directionally towards the receiver It needs to be metal to be able to conduct electricity and interact with those radio waves um, and I need to be able to make it out of existing parts I've got lying around the house because there's no shopping so let me have a look around let's see I think this lampshade will do just fine it's made of metal it's nice and small and it's got a sharp angle 
Yeah, I'm standing at my DIY standing desk, which I built in a previous video. However, the tabletop here is different to the tabletop in the video that I made. That's because that was a temporary tabletop and I hadn't gotten around to building the new one. But I still need to do a part two. It just, I've been very busy, so I haven't gotten around to it. Still coming, don't worry. Might still be a while, but this is my DIY standing desk, as you can see, that I'm standing at. Some good old duct tape. If you haven't seen my previous video of my standing desk build, it is a motorized standing desk that uses a computer power supply to power a 12 volt drill motor to lift it up and down. Well, this drill I'm busy using to drill a hole into the lampshade is also being powered by the same power supply. See you! Oops. If you haven't seen that previous video, I highly recommend you go and watch it because it's quite in depth on how to make a DIY motorized standing desk if you want to make one yourself. But I suppose it's also entertainment if you're bored. I don't know. <laughs> Your choice. Let's test and see how conductive it actually is. Whether the case is actually shorted to the antenna. Yep. Case is shorted. Okay, the signal is much better than it's been before. A bit, still, still a bit messy. It's much more. It's much better. Every now and then you get a little bit of that green fuzz that you're seeing there, but for the most part, it is way better. I'm going to use this old tripod head mount to attach the antenna to, so that I can fine tune the direction that it's pointing in for good reception. Well it turns out mounting the antenna directly to the stalk worsened the reception quite a lot. The reason why it looked so good when I first mounted it was because I duct taped it to my normal tripod which was set about 15 centimeters aside from the camera's little mounting stick there. It's quite difficult to find a drill bit the right size for the tripod screw mount, but eventually I made it too big and I had to steal the brass screw ring thing from the little Chinese knockoff GoPro mount, which I'm busy doing here in this shot. And now after all that work, trying to mount the antenna to the tripod head on the piece of wood has uh, resulted in um, the opposite of what I wanted to achieve. There's some birds up in the street, aren't there? So I need to remove the current mount because it's a bit too far over this way and can't get a good direction on there. This chill here for now, and I'm gonna use this to extend the tripod head out of it. The reason for this is because I wanted to get the antenna in around the same spot that it was when I had it duct taped to my camera tripod, so that because uh, it 
earlier the quality of the signal was really good and it actually paid off to move it across about 10 centimeters. So it's, it's just try and error, try and error to get it correct. But once it's correct, it should be a good investment of time. <laughs> okay, hopefully that is pointing in the correct direction now. We'll find out when we go inside to go and see what the camera feed looks like. Camera is still funky more, yes. Wow, just moving the camera about 10 centimeters to the side made a big difference. So I have fine-tuned the, uh, the camera's antenna as best as I could. So now I'm going to try and re-adjust the receiver's antenna to see if maybe that should make a difference to the signal. This is literally just chilling up over here. Hmm, I wonder where I can place it. Let's see. No, that's actually worsened it now. So it seems positioning the antenna right there up on the door frame seems to be the best spot for the best signal. Not perfect, but decent enough signal, but not great. My idea is to move the receiver and the antenna to the next room, which looks like this. Now there is the, the antenna of the camera, and it will have a much more direct path to the receiver if it was sitting on the windowsill here. So at this point I'd moved everything across to that room and still had terrible signal so I decided to experiment with different antennas. Tried a Wi-Fi antenna, terrible. Tried a television RF antenna with coaxial cable, but no bueno. Then I tried to take inspiration from the original antenna, which was a massive grounded area and a very small section dedicated to picking up the main signal, which uh, I tried here. Massive brown plate, with metal plate, with a small piece of wire in the middle to pick up the data. But that was just like hanging a coaxial cable in midair. But the next thing I found was much better. I've just found the antenna that works the best. There's the module, of course, with a coax cable. I've spliced it into the one of these bug zappers. <laughs> but ground is the outer mesh and the main connection that's actually picking up the data is this the inner layer of mesh. And then the other side just isn't the other negative ground mesh is not being used. It's just there. But it actually works really, really well. I am, I'm surprised. <laughs> but now I can put that back together again and it should work. I highly apologize for the dark video. Uh, this room doesn't have much light and yes, it has taken me a while to figure out what's the best antenna. But I believe this is the, the best one so far. Plug in. Let's see. It gets a good, it gets really good signal because I'm actually really impressed with this. Like just how good that signal is. Yeah, still of course every now and then there's that little hiccup. But this is insane how clean this signal is. Oh wow. So much better than the previous attempt. And there goes the red signal. Don't trust Chinese DVRs. <laughs>
I literally am using a pair of pliers resting on top of the monitor cable just to let the red signal come through. Otherwise without it, uh, yeah, it just disappears. There's no red going through the analog channel of VGA, but I am very impressed with this. Well, it is unfortunately the end of this video, um, but it has been a fun experience and interesting to see how different antennas have affected the signal quality. But anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.